What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we got a request to talk a little bit about how to make yourself a competitive applicant for the academy. So if, uh, for those of you who don't know, we're both academy grads, Julie and I, I'm Philip. And uh, yeah, we just graduated this past May. I'm currently in Japan. Julie is about to go to California. And uh, yeah, it was a heck of a ride and we're gonna tell you a little bit about it. Um, so first, like there are a few big areas where you can prepare yourself for the Naval Academy, academically, physically, for your leadership, and for your story. You know, everyone, you need a good story for the admission office to say, wow, we want him or we want her. So first, I'll talk a little bit about academic. So for school, you need a grade that's above um, 3.6 GPA. I think that should be a minimal because for a lot of you guys, including us, uh, we took a lot of AP classes and that, that, that's weighted GPA. So a lot of people applying for the Naval Academy have a GPA of over 4.0. And Philip's sister, she actually has a GPA of like five point something, which is kind of crazy. Um, other yeah, than yeah, our high school offers a lot of uh, AP credits. So you can get your GPA like way up there, like mid fives, I think is the highest. But yeah, I went in, I had like a weighted GPA of around four. So it's, uh, it's not a huge deal. Um, so keep that in mind. Yeah, but still like above 3.6. Yeah, so if you're unweighted is below that though, like you, you should still be able to, to get in without too many issues. But keep in mind, like obviously the better you do, better your chances. Mm -hmm. And for the SAT and the GRE, uh, so these are the official data that the reading writing portion 560 to 680 the math is 5 590 to 690 um, if you combine the two I think 1350 plus would be a good SAT score and remember the Naval Academy they do super score so they can take the best of either SAT or GRE and put them together for example for me um, they took my SAT math and my GRE writing and then put them put a score together yeah and keep in mind for this like it doesn't it, it matters obviously and the better you do the better your chances and all that but um for the naval academy like a lot of it isn't so much around like the numbers obviously you want to meet the standards but the way you're really going to prove yourself are in your interviews in getting your nomination in your essay things like that like i personally like uh to be you know totally upfront, i was in the 12s for my sat so it, it doesn't like you can get in graduate and do well and uh you don't have to have like a 1600 sat right and that brings up to the next point leadership the naval academy is all about leadership because at the end of the day we are going to be leading sailors and marines in harm's ways so for leadership i think in the common section a lot of people ask that if they don't have a lot of leadership in school like in varsity sports team what should they do but we have to think more broadly you don't just need like have leadership positions in school right if you volunteer anywhere like Rotary Club or Lions Club, if you work as a lifeguard, you know, as a cashier, as a manager somewhere, if you're even if you're a big sister, a big brother, you take care of your siblings, for your parents, all this are leadership. You got to be creative, you know? Yeah, yeah. So for me, like I personally didn't do student government. I like I think I ran for it once, but I, I never ended up doing it. Um, sports teams, I was on a little bit. Uh, I wasn't like the team captain um, or anything. So like, you don't need to be like the absolute top cream of the crop for sports or student government or anything. Um, I participated in clubs. I wasn't the president or anything. Like remembering back, I think what, what really helped me were like, like Julia said, like uh, lifeguarding. I did that like every summer I had my like lifeguarding, like head, I don't know, of the city HR department, human resources. She like wrote me a recommendation. I did another job being horses mm -hmm. um, most mornings. And I had that guy write me a recommendation, like be creative, like get out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and F Philip, Philip is a physical beast to that yeah, person definitely. whoever made a mean comment that back at you. All right, Philip, what did right. you tell us about physical? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, physically, so this is the uh, Candidate Fitness Assessment, CFA. Once you get to the Naval Academy, it'll be the PRT, the Physical Readiness Test. But for now, all you need to focus on is this. So if you hear anything about like, oh, a mile and a half run and push-ups and sit-ups, like that's the PRT, don't worry about that. This is what you want to focus on if you're trying to get in. 
So the basketball throw, you're just on your knees, you're chucking a basketball, that really doesn't matter. So I actually ran these tests um, the summer before I graduated the academy. And the things you really want to focus on, the mile run, I'd say, is, is a, a big thing. Like a lot of people can't run very well, and all you need to do is just get out there and run um, and practice. The shuttle run, for me, I just did my best. Like, I don't know, I guess you can go hit the gym and try and weight lift and get it down like 0.2. But I'd say the big things that you can really change are the mile run, push-ups, uh, and sit-ups. And then, like, pull-ups, that's going to take some work. Like, you can, you can do it. Like, I remember, I think I was able to hit 18, but it took a lot of training. But things that, like, the most bang for your buck is probably going to be the mile run and push-ups and sit-ups. You should be able to mass, match, uh, max the sit-ups pretty easily. Push-ups, like, probably most of them. And then the mile run, just train for that. Yeah, yeah Julia, and do you have anything And also all the numbers you see on the screen are maximum performance score. So, like, yes. Don't like, don't be worried that if you don't hit the maximum, like I would never be able to run a mile in six minutes. So I think I ran my, my mile in like just like seven minutes. I don't quite remember, but like, don't worry if you don't hit the maximum number. Yeah. And they, they aren't going to tell you your minimum. So this is where like the different, I don't know, areas of the Naval Academy application help. So like if you do really well on your essay and your interviews and you didn't do so hot physically, that can help like balance each other out. So yeah, you won't get any uh, minimums for this. You're just going to do the best you can. Yep. So just overall be a physically fit person. Um, and definitely varsity athletes are preferred. I think well, like 90, 95% of Naval Academy midshipmen participate in at least one athlete sport in high school because as a, as a midshipman, you have to do at least one sport. Um, so, you know, if you're really good, you can come to Naval Academy and be a varsity athlete. But even, even if you're not, like, it doesn't matter. You, you'd be fine. Yep. All right. Other talent. Um, definitely, like, you know, the Naval Academy is not just about physical fitness and like taking tests. Um, they, I think they definitely value other talents a lot. For example, like the Naval Academies have a few musicals every year. Our glee clubs are very, very famous. Like our glee club saw for the president multiple times. Um, and then if you're in the band, you know what? At the Naval Academy, band counts as a sport. Um, if you're very good at painting, photography, photography making videos, um, if you can speak multiple languages, you know, like whatever you do, even if it's underwater basket we weaving, if you have some special talent, don't be shy. You got to sell yourself. Do you have anything to yep. add, Philip? No, that's good. Yeah, definitely. Like you don't have to, you don't have to just be good at sports. There are all kinds of people there. Mm -hmm. All right. Lastly, diversity. So the Naval Academy historically is a Caucasian male university. If you look at the history, by the first few decades, there's no like minority at all. There's no female until very recently. So like right now with, you know, the time moving forward, uh, the society moving forward as a whole, the Naval Academy values diversity very, very much. So me, I had a lot of advantage when I applied to the academies because I am an immigrant, I am a female, I am a minority. Um, I definitely think that was in my favor. Um, yeah, so the Naval Academy, I think the female like to male ratio just hit one to three, which is over 25%. And that's a lot for the Naval Academy because traditionally it's you know less than 10% female. Um, so definitely, Whatever your situation may be, you, you need to spin it and shine a new light on it. For example, my situation and Philip's situation were very, very different, but both of us were able to get into the Naval Academy because of our unique, unique background. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I came from a military family. My dad was in the Marine Corps. We moved around quite a bit. Um, I've lived all over the place in Japan and California, DC, everywhere. And um, yeah, I just like talked about that and my experiences with that, you know, I used it a lot in interviews and the essay and, and um, yeah, like I wouldn't say that I was necessarily like better prepared going into the academy, like you're as prepared as you want to be like physically, like mentally, like, you know, you can memorize everything before you go in and be super prepared, like, 
Um, but you know, whatever your situation is, like, it, I think it really just comes down to like, do you want to be there? Like that I saw people who were mili like military kids their entire lives and they left during Kaloop summer or like people who'd never seen the military at all before made it all the way through and thrived. So, you know, it's, it's like how much you want it. Mm -hmm. And for the interview, I think it's very important to go in with a story. What makes you special? You know, like even if you have the most boring life, you know, born in nuclear family in America and the like classic middle class family, you still have something unique about you. And don't be shy, like dig, dig, dig deep in yourself. And when you go in there with your blue and gold officer, tell them your story. Tell them why you want to be there, why you're special, why, why are you different from other people? Yeah. All right. So lastly, just to wrap this up, I want to say, first of all, finish your application. You know, if you Google the Naval Academy acceptance rate is 7%, but if you were able to follow through with all the steps in the application, like literally just to finish the application, your chances of getting accepted is like one out of three. It's like 40%. So like, don't give up. I know it's a really long application process. It's really intimidating at times, but just don't give up, you know? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, the hardest part, like for a lot of people, is just hitting all the wickets. Like, if you get a nomination, like you're pretty, you're you're sitting pretty good. Like if you're in some, you know, state with not that many people that want to go, and you get like your senator's nomination, you're pretty much set as long as you hit all the standards. Yes, and, and there are a lot of ways to get nominations. For example, there's a typical way from senator and congressman. I actually got my nomination. Oh, I was a, I was still a Chinese citizen when the Naval Academy accepted me. So my senator and con I'm from Pennsylvania near Philadelphia, which is a very competitive spot for the Naval Academy because you know they're very close. Um, so my senator and my congressman didn't want to give me a nomination because I didn't have proof that I would get my American citizenship by the time I go to the Naval Academy. And if that was the case, they'd be wasting a nomination. So I got my nomination through Jay Rotc. Yes, J-R-O-T-C. It's probably the easiest way to get a nomination because no one, absolutely no one, applied to Jay Rotc nomination. You don't need no interview, you don't need no nothing. Just go talk to your Jay Rotc um, officer in charge. Be like, hey, sir, I wanna apply. They fill out a form, takes them like 10 minutes max. And then that's how you get your nomination. And I think yeah, you yeah. apply for the vice president nomination, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a vice president one. That one's very hard to get. There are only a couple slots for the whole country. Uh, if you're a military kid, definitely do the presidential nomination. You can look, like, you can, quick Google search will tell you the requirements for all these. But yeah, if you have a parent who served in the military, presidential nomination is super helpful. Like you said, JROTC, like, especially if you're like in a place like, I don't know, Pennsylvania or Maryland where like everyone wants to go to the academy, like these things can definitely help you to give a, like, get a leg up because you're probably like odds are like, it's going to be a lot harder to get your Senator or Congressman if everyone from your hometown is trying to go to the academy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like that's pretty much it. Uh, we don't want to drown out for too long. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. We'll be uh, posting more videos like this and also talking about finances. The picture on the screen right now, that's a uh, Dahlgren Hall at the Academy. It's got like the state flag for every single state hanging up in there. It's a pretty cool place. Uh, pretty cool for photos, as you can see. Something to look forward to if you go to the Academy. That'll actually be one of the first places you probably go. Um, or if you visit, you've definitely been there. It's, um, yeah, it's a pretty beautiful place. It's hard to see that, you know, once you get in and you're like grinding through Cleve Summer. But, you know, once you... Once you like, have some time to stop and look around, it's, it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. All right. Best of luck. See you next time. Bye. Yep. Thanks for subscribing.